I love to create new things with vinyl in my Cricut, but if I'm not careful, it can get expensive. So one of my favorite ways to keep it budget friendly is to shop at Dollar Tree. Not only do they have great blanks for your vinyl, but also they've got Cricut inspired products and tools, and they also have items that make great Cricut hacks. So today I am covering all of it. So sit back, relax, and let's hit it because we got a lot to cover. And Craft Buddies, before we get rolling here, I want to let you know that while all of these are Dollar Tree items, you can also make these with items you can find at other stores. So if you don't live near a Dollar Tree or the Dollar Tree you do have is struggling and you can never find the things I share, don't worry. You can take all the tips and tricks, the cut files, all the things today and put them on things that you can find. So don't worry if that's the case. I'm also using my Cricut Maker 3 today, but you do not need a Cricut Maker 3 for these. You can use any vinyl cutter that you have. With that out of the way, let's hop into it. I love to look at the stationery and office aisle for blanks, but lately I've been finding gems in the toy section. I absolutely love these Barbie pouches because once you take the insert out and the little hangers, you would not guess that it is for Barbies. I like to get them for storage in my craft room. I like to measure them first to make sure I know what size my decal is going to be. I needed seven inches and you're going to type out what you want to put on it in any font in design space or your design software. And you're just going to size it to the width that you need. So in this case, seven inches, I'm using the font highway and I will have all of those details down below and I'm going to cut it on this fun new mirror chrome vinyl that I got from tech wrap off of Amazon. Now this is interesting because it comes with a protective sheet, but all you have to do is peel that off before you cut it on your machine and it cuts just like regular vinyl. I was super excited because this is really pretty. The shine, the camera does not do it justice, but it is so cute. I love the blush color and it weeded like a dream. So I will definitely be checking out more tech wrap vinyl. I've heard from a lot of people that they love it. So I wanted to try it too. Then I'm just going to take some regular transfer tape. I get mine from Expressions Vinyl. I will link it down below. This is just their clear transfer tape and I am going to apply it right to that clear piece on the front. Now I opened it so I would make sure that it was on straight in the center. I pressed from the center to the outside to get rid of any bubbles. And then I did have to use my hand to help it adhere right away just because of the way that that clear pieces of the bag. But once I got it to stick, these are awesome. They would be great in diaper bags. They hold happy planner stickers perfectly. That's why I wanted it. But then I also have a ton of glue sticks that I could put in there. So many different options. And they also fit really perfect in these containers I also found at Dollar Tree. Again, you can find these anywhere, but if you can get them for $1.25, that is a steal and these file in you could fit four to five in there with supplies stickers if you want to organize notepads this would also be great in a classroom now what if you find these and you want to customize these just for general storage i've got you there too you could put a vinyl decal on the long side or the short side you just want to make sure like i said before that you measure this is about five inches i wanted it to go the whole width so i'm typing out things like transfer tape hair accessories chiffon ribbon and i'm just going to the top with that same font and changing it to five inches wide then once I had everything I wanted to cut out for a label, I'm just going to cut it on some black vinyl that I had. And usually if it cuts really well, like this one does, I can just weed the excess all in one swipe and then cut them apart. It saves me time. And then I'm going to remove all of the innards of the letters like A's, P's, D's, any of those extra pieces that I don't need. And here's another Dollar Tree hack coming your way. I love to grab the masking tape to use as a transfer tape alternative. You can also use clear contact paper or painter's tape, but this masking tape, super cheap. And I just add a little tape cap that I got from Amazon. It is great for painter's tape and masking tape to get a straight line when you go to rip it. So then that way you've got a nice clean piece for your vinyl. Apply it right on there, scrape it, peel it off just like you would transfer tape. And the best part is it applies cleanly and you can reuse it. I use the same piece a bunch of times and that is so budget friendly and it is a great addition to my new craft island if you missed my video last week with my whole tour of how i organize my craft room i will link that for you because you definitely don't want to miss that one i also am using these in my closet for things like scrunchies and headbands and it is going to help me in 2024 keep my act together in their craft section, Dollar Tree has a variety of these chalkboard tags, and I love to have them on hand because all you have to do is measure them, 
and then cut graphics to create whatever kind of gift tag that you need. I've created a ton of different occasion ones, a pack of six that will be available over in the folder. And I just cut them out on white vinyl, three inches wide. I weeded them and then I decided to apply them with paper transfer tape just so I don't rip the paper tag. This is like if you watched my prior Cricut Blanks videos and you saw me putting decals on to paper bags it's the same thought process but this is so nice because the paper transfer tape is not going to rip up your delicate surface and then you could either do colored vinyl or just have it like this and put it on a colored bag as you can see there's proud of you congratulations hooray for more general happy birthday thank you these are so nice to be able to just whip up and throw on a gift especially when it's last minute and you need something quick and inexpensive also in the Dollar Tree craft section, I found these little wood boxes and they're great to stain and then just add a decal. I had this one left over from Christmas when I made my nativity set. I measured it and it was about five and a half inches. So I decided to cut it five inches wide. And have you ever tried a reverse weed? This is nice when you've got little letters like I do in this file. You're going to apply the transfer tape just right over the top of your vinyl. Don't remove that big piece. I just took out the little pieces of the inner part of the letters and then you can weed it almost like you're weeding heat transfer vinyl. You can peel it back carefully, just make sure it doesn't stick to itself. And this is a great way to keep those pieces stuck on the transfer tape and get all of the extra vinyl off. It'll take a couple tries, be patient with yourself, but once you get the hang of it, it is a game changer. I'm adding this just to the center of my sign. Again, starting from the center, pushing out. That's what we're doing every time, just to remove those bubbles. And I love the message of this sign. This is a resolution that I wanna to stick to this year, trying to be more present in life. So do more things that make you forget to check your phone. I'm putting this in my office to remind me that when I'm here, I'm present. When I'm with Finn, when I'm with my family, I am present there as well. Because of the content that I share, one of my top questions is for Cricut, what is worth it at Dollar Tree as far as supplies? 10 out of 10, I could not recommend enough their Cricut inspired tools. Everything from the weeder to scraper, spatula, and also the scoring stylist, definitely grab it. I also would recommend their Cricut Joy mats, these little pumpers for rubbing alcohol if you need that to wipe off any surfaces. And I also grabbed some of this LA Totally Awesome because I heard through the grapevine it's perfect for cleaning your mats. Now while we're on the subject of Dollar Tree Cricut inspired products, something that is a definite no more buy for me is their vinyl. Unless I'm just going to take the whole sheet and cover something, it is definitely not for cutting on my machine. I've had issues of it not cutting correctly, the backer sheet being too thin so it rips when you pull it off the mat. I have just not had good luck. I know some of you have, and that is so great for you, but I just don't recommend people buy it because I have such a hard time cutting on it. But what I would recommend for vinyl is finding some really good quality ones that you get used to, and then that way you know how it works throughout the process so you can continue to reach for the ones that you like. I buy all of my vinyl pretty much from expressionsvinyl.com, and I'm also a member of their Vinyl Club membership. This is something that I have just done in the background for years because I really like the value and if you're an Expressions Vinyl customer, that's where I found my paper transfer tape originally, you definitely want to check out their Vinyl Club membership. I get a lot of questions on where I buy my vinyl, what is good to use. I will have all my Expressions Vinyl favorites down below. This next item is found in the plus section. So if you don't have a plus section, you could find one of these at Walmart, Target, or use a sign you already have. They are these huge chalkboards and I've used them for the past few seasons because for five bucks you can't beat it. I like to tape off the edges and then use a little bit of this antique wax to give it a stained finish because it was negative 25 outside so I was not about to go out and stain. It dries really quick and it gives you the really dark wood look that I like. I've uploaded my SVG into Design Space and I've sized it to what I want. So I want it to be 20 inches wide and that puts me at about 12.4 ish inches wide. Now that's gonna be too big for my 12 by 24 mat to cut. So what I need to do is go over here to the side and this SVG is grouped. So I'm going to select this top one and go to ungroup. Then I'm gonna go down here to E Walcott and I am going to attach this. I can go back and regroup it, but grouping has no bearing on how it's going to cut. So it's still going to cut a bunch of different letters. And then I'm going to select this, which will give me 20 by 10.5, which will easily fit on my mat. 
so that I'm going to attach that as well. So then when I go to make it, it's going to give me the quote and then the little name all in the right size on my mat. So this will cut as one and then this I can just pop right here. Once you run that vinyl through your machine, I just cut off the quote attribution for the bottom. I weeded that and then I did the kind of cut each piece as you go just because it is a large sign. Then I am adding my 12 inch paper transfer tape. I also got that from Expressions Vinyl. That'll be down in the links, but I literally love that paper transfer tape. If you've been a craft buddy for a while, you know I talk about it all the time because it's literally my favorite. Then when it comes time to apply, I'm using the hinge method. So I'm gonna get the sign where I want it to go before I peel the backing off, stick some painter's tape so it won't move, and then do one side, trim it, and then do the other side. That is a game changer when it comes to applying large signs like this because nine times out of 10, I'm gonna do it crooked if I don't use the hinge method. So it's a fun little hack that I use all the time. Then once I have my top piece applied, remember to give yourself a little bit of space so that you can put the E wall cut underneath, but then bada bing, bada boom, you guys, this is literally something that you would pay so much money for at a boutique and you can make it yourself you can put literally whatever quote you want. And this is actually a free font that I used to make this. I will link the details down below if you want to make your own special quote. I recently did a little happy dance in the candle aisle when I found these. I actually had to really look, squat down, but they have these wood topped ones. And these are awesome for gifting. I had to use some nail polish remover to get rid of those stubborn stickers. But once I got them off, they were a perfect Cricut blank. Now, for these, I measured them and decided that I needed the width to be two and a half inches for the kind of frosted orange and green ones. And then for the other one, it's three inches wide. I weeded out these designs, everything in this video I designed, so they will all be free over on my blog for you to check out all that's down in the description. And I'm just applying with regular transfer tape, be the light home sweet home, which would be great if somebody closes on a house. You could also do this for engagements, for weddings, wedding dates, and you can put this on any different size of candle. They don't have to be Dollar Tree ones. Walmart has larger ones like this that are beautiful. You could do the exact same thing. Target, anywhere that sells candles, you can grab them and put a decal on. This is just the Dollar Tree version. Then for the smaller one, I couldn't help but think of the Taylor Swift song Maroon. So I decided to cut lyrics to three inches wide. I did the reverse weed and used my mat to help me hold it. So you just put it upside down on the mat to kind of hold it steady. And then I was able to get all of these little letters. So Scarlet, it was Maroon out of there. So I'm gonna add that to my Taylor Swift candle collection here in my office, but you could customize it to whatever you want. You could use my cup files, somebody else's, make your own. So many different options. I love these. Just let them sit for a couple days before you gift them. Let your permanent vinyl cure and then it will stick so much better. If you are totally new to the Cricut game or you've had it for a while and you haven't gotten it out of the closet or out of the box, don't worry, stick with me till the end because I'm gonna walk you through super slow how to do the final project. So from start to finish, all of the different things, I have that for any beginner, so just stick with me till the end and then you can use what you learned on that project when you go to recreate any of these other ones. Earlier I mentioned my video from last week, which is the organization of my craft space and a ton of tips and tricks. And so many of you said that got you motivated to organize your space. So I wanted to give you a couple options of fun, cute little craft tool and craft supply organization. These jars were on an end cap at my Dollar Tree. You can use any jar that you can find, but you're gonna measure it and whatever the width of what you're trying to apply it to, you're gonna cut it to that amount. So I needed three inches wide. I cut three of these images that will be free over on my blog for you to grab. It is a paintbrush. I also have a glue gun and a set of scissors. Make, DIY, and create. I weeded them out and then we're just gonna apply them to one side with some transfer tape. You can just use regular old transfer tape. I almost forgot the little hole in the paintbrush, but never fear, we went back and got it. It's super quick and easy to apply and these things are so cute. I love the iridescent color. It is such a great fit for my new craft space and this is also awesome if you don't have a craft space, if you're working on a small area, these will fit into a little cart or into a little like shower caddy size thing to keep your stuff organized. Now speaking of organized, I think this Dollar Tree might need a little bit of help 
But in all the clutter, I found this awesome candy jar with a gold lid. I've seen these before, but I usually find them with the clear lid. I've spray painted those before, so this is nice. You can just find one with a gold lid and then not have to worry about it. I wanted to put a decal on the side and by measuring, the width was about five inches. So I gave myself some breathing room and cut this glue gun to four inches. So this is the same glue gun we put on the container prior. So you can cut them to whatever size you have, whatever works. These are all customizable. And that's why I love giving you my free files because you can use them on whatever you want. And I love seeing what you guys do that isn't exactly what I did with it. Quick and easy black permanent vinyl right on the side. And these are great for a ton of different things. I love the pom-poms in there, but really anything you need help organizing, whether it be craft room or not, these containers are great. I'm so glad you clicked play on this video. And because you did, I'm going to assume that you want to learn as much as you can about your Cricut and how to master it. Well, if you like this video, I've got a full free event for you that I know you're also going to love. I am a speaker at the Cricut Craft Fest again this year. This is the third time I've done this event and it is a free event that is basically like a large conference. Think of it as whatever industry you're in. They have conferences, they have rooms full of experts that want to teach you. Well, it's exactly the same, but it's all virtual here. So from February 5th through the 9th, there will be over 45 classes taught by Cricut experts. They are full step-by-step -step tutorials you can watch on demand. So each day, a batch of videos will go live at 9 a.m. Eastern. You can watch them and download the free file for that 24-hour period. And then the next day, you'll get another batch of classes all week long. The great thing is the event is free and you can register by scanning this QR code or heading down to the link in the description. In my workshop on day two of the Craft Fest, I'm going to be showing you from start to finish how to make your own custom wood crate and also just to show you how to wood burn the easy way so not only can you do it on crates but any other wood surface it's a great technique to have in your arsenal for 2024 to create some amazing home decor gifts and beyond so if you're interested in the Cricut Craft Fest be sure to grab that free ticket first just to make sure that you are on the list you'll get all that info when everything goes live that week Another great new item are these bin labels, and I'm going to show you how you can create your own insert for them with your Cricut. So the first thing we're going to do is add a shape over here on the left, and I am just going to go simple with this square. Now what you're going to do is unlock here so that we can create something that's a rectangle, not a square. So you're going to unlock the aspect ratio. The width is three and a half, and then we're looking at like 2.4. So now that we have this, I'm doing 3.5 by 2.3. I'm going to lock it. And this is what is going to cut as your insert for your label. So I'm going to go ahead and just switch it to a lighter color so I can see what I'm doing. Then all we need to do is add our text. And the kicker here is we want to make sure that it is a writing font. You can either search your system or through Cricut. If you have Cricut access, you can use that, but you definitely don't need Cricut access. Um, it's nice to have, but it's definitely not a need to have. Sometimes your system fonts are not going to be calibrated to right. So I'm going to go with a Cricut font. Let's go up here and we're going to search for the writing font. And I'm also going to select free because I'm going to assume that we're working without Cricut access. Okay, so here's the text. This works great. So I need to create a miscellaneous one because I have a tub that's full of a bunch of stuff. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this again and create another one for wood blinks. And I'm just using that square to help me size my font. So I'm not using a specific number. I'm just stretching it for that. Now, if you want to switch the space between the top word and the bottom word, you can go ahead and go to line space here and either add or subtract. If you subtract, it's going to bring them closer together like I'm doing now. If you add, it's going to bring them further apart. So then say I've got these two things. I'm going to select the word and the tag. So I've got both of these selected. And the first thing I'm going to go to is a line and I'm going to do the center. So it centers both horizontally and vertically. So we've got that on there. And then I am going to go over here and hit attach. Take it. Once everything's attached, it's going to have your pen where it's going to write right on top of that square that we're going to cut out. So then I'm just going to hit continue. It's going to look for my machine. And then I am going to select the cardstock that I'm using. So it's going to depend on what you're using to cut. But for me, I'm using light cardstock. So I'm just using this 65 pound one. It will say it on the package of your cardstock. This is just regular cardstock I got from Michaels. 
Once you click that, we are going to load the pen and the fine point blade in and we're gonna get cutting. If you've never added a pen to your Cricut before, it is super easy. You just open up the slot that it tells you to use depending on your machine. You're going to push in your marker and then lock it shut. Push your marker till it clicks and shut it. It is super quick and easy, very simple. And then you just insert your mat just like you would the vinyl. There are light grip mats, but I just use one of my standard grips that isn't as tacky and then it's going to be easier to get the paper off of the mat. Then it is going to go through first and do the writing pass and then it will do the cutting pass. So just set it and forget it. Let that thing start to write and it's going to look like hieroglyphs at first because it doesn't write in your traditional order. I get a lot of you guys asking me if I make mistakes. Yes, I just wrote on my map because I didn't turn my paper. So we're just going to flip it over and start again because, you know, that's how it works. We're going to stick it down. And we're going to go for round two. Once we got that back on track, it was much better. But yes, I do make mistakes. It happens. Everyone's human. I just don't want to fill a video full of mistakes for you guys because then you wouldn't want to watch it. You come here to want to learn stuff. So anywho, that is why I wanted to share that in this video. Once it does the writing pass, it's going to do the cutting pass. So it's going to cut those squares that we told it to cut so it'll fit into our labels. And then once it's done, eject it, peel off your little pieces, and they can get popped right in to those labels. I really like these because they have this clip on the back. It goes right on this handle, and it's pretty much universal. So wherever you have these bins from, as long as the clip fits over it, it is going to work great. I also like that I can swap this out. I didn't have to worry about vinyl. And easy peasy, I'm definitely picking up more of these when I see them at the store. If you want bin labels and you can't find the Dollar Tree ones, I do have an Amazon version as well that I will link down below just in case your store doesn't carry these yet. Did you know you can also use that Cricut pen feature to address an envelope? Well, I grabbed my trusty card organizer to grab one to show you guys. And if you like to give out cards like I do, this is a must have. I grab cards when I see them, when they're cute, when they're on sale, etc. And then I have them for when I need them. You're going to take your card envelope and put the flap on the back and stick it right to your mat and then figure out what size your envelope is. Once we know that our envelope is a five by seven size, we're going to go over to shapes and we're going to create a rectangle again. So grab your square, unlock, and we're going to do seven by five. Then I'm going to go ahead and change this to white just so then that way I can see what I'm working with. And then I'm going to go to the text. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to find ourselves a writing font. So up here you can sort again. I've got free and writing. And then I'm going to find one that I like. So first I'm going to address this. Then we are going to select that and you can make it whatever size that will fit in that five by seven. You can also do if you want it to be smaller, larger, what have you. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that and I'm gonna add my return address. We're gonna take the entire thing, hit attach, and then we're going to click make on mat. And then here is your envelope. And to keep this super straightforward, you're just gonna pop your blade out. Then that way it's not gonna cut your card, but it is going to write where you want it. Then you're just gonna hit start. It's going to write, it's going to put all of the words where you told it to go. And then when it's done writing, it will do a quick pass around the outside, but because you took your blade out, it's not going to cut your envelope. That's the easiest way I can explain it, especially to a beginner. So just pop your blade out and then pop it back in. And that will help you have everything right where it needs to be written. In my Valentine's Day video a couple weeks ago, I shared this Backstreet Boys sign that I made last year. And I had so many people tell me that's great, but I would like NSYNC or New Kids on the Block. You guys, this is going to prove that I definitely listen to the craft buddies. We're grabbing another one of these Dollar Tree wood rounds. You can also get them at any other craft store. And I stained it first, but then I decided to paint it pink. Now, if you're interested on how to get these files in and to add the words and the offsets, I shared that in that Valentine's Day video. So for the sake of time today, I'm going to link that for you so you can check it out. I ended up doing the New Kids on the Block on one side, and then I did InSync on the other. And these, you want to cut them on the iron-on setting because that is going to make it so you can get all these fine details. I mean, look at that. Like, Don <laughs> look at Donnie's hair. Like, you definitely get some good features with this. You just want to be patient when you are weeding. 
I took some paper transfer tape and applied it to the new kids. And then I'm going to just apply it with the curve to help me line it up, which again, I will show you how I did that in the Backstreet Boys video. And then if you've got questions on that, just leave them down below. Once I applied that, then I followed up with, you got the right stuff, baby. I put the words onto my offset that I made in white. And then I added that right on the top of my sign. I did sync on the other side and I used the iconic line. It's gonna be my, don't mind my singing. That was probably terrible. Don't judge me. But anyway, that's what I think of when I see this sign. This brought me so much joy. Thank you to everyone that commented and asked for all of these different variations of the sign. My boy band heart is just so happy. And also if you like 90s pop, I also have a Britney Spears Valentine's Day printable. And I also have some Grease ones too. So if you like pop culture type stuff, be sure to check out that Valentine's Day video because there's a ton of options there. Today we've done a ton of stuff with adhesive vinyl, but I'm actually going to grab one of these tote bags and show you how to customize it with heat transfer vinyl because a town near me recently went bagless. So you have to bring your own bag. So I thought this would be fun when I go grocery shopping and or craft shopping because that's where I go a lot to get my supplies. This file I cut to 11 inches wide and it says might be groceries, might be crafts. You want to make sure that you hit the mirror button when you go to cut it and make sure it's on the iron on setting. And you're going to also make sure that you put the shiny side down on your mat. If you are having questions about different Cricut materials, you can check out my materials guide, which I will link for you. It goes over the different kinds of materials, why you would want to use it, when, all of that fine stuff. So I will link that for you. We're going to weed it the same way. It's just backwards because you're weeding away from a sticky carrier sheet. And once you get all of your little pieces out, we're going to set our heat press. I'm doing 320 for 30 seconds, but you can also use an iron if you don't have a heat press. Settings are dependent on the type of heat transfer vinyl that you have, so make sure that you check the box or the packaging whenever you get that. I'm gonna press the front and the back of the bag, and I'm just gonna apply this to the back of the bag because then I'll just have a two-sided bag. I'm not worried about that. I took my bag, got out any wrinkles, and then I did a press down the center. I folded my decal in half and gave it a slight crease on the carrier sheet, not on the vinyl, but that helps me line it up. I'm gonna press it, the whole thing. It took me a couple times to cover it. And voila, super quick and easy. I love this bag. I'm gonna be so styling when I go to get my craft supplies or whatever else I need a bag for. I can just leave this in my car. It folds up well. And I'm also going to take it to Aldi because it's for groceries too. So I'm really excited to use this. I think it turned out so cute. And if you make this bag, please take a picture and send it to me. I want to see craft buddies out in the wild with their groceries and craft bags. So if you make it, let me know. Up next, I'm grabbing one of these new larger 8x11 chalkboards and we're going to turn it into this weeknight menu chalkboard. So we're going to take this one a little bit slower because so many of you guys have told me that you want more help with your Cricut and I am so happy to oblige. So we are going to upload an SVG that I have for you for free over on my blog. All you need to do is scan this QR code or head to the link in the description and you can download all of my files that are free today. So we've got this on the menu file and we are going to upload it. And then we're going to click it and add it to the canvas. Then we are going to size it. So our big chalkboard is eight by 11, or if you have a different size, you're gonna size it to that. So the width, I'm gonna give myself about an inch of breathing room. So I'm going to do seven inches wide, and that is going to make it about nine inches tall. I'm actually gonna go 7.5, just so I have more room to write my menu information. So that is going to give me a half inch on either side, but it's going to fill the entire thing. Another thing you can do if you're needing help with sizing is you can add a shape the size of your blank and that will help you visualize. So I'm just adding a square. We're going to unlock the aspect ratio up here under size and I am going to do eight by 11. Then if you need for visual sake, you can change the color, but then you can take your file. If we bring it to the front and you can see it on your blank essentially. So if we wanted this to look more like a mock-up, we can change this to black. So here is what our little chalkboard is going to look like and it's going to fit great on the size that we're going for. Now, if you have not worked with SVGs before, you might hit make it 
right off the bat here once you have it sized and you're going to get a little bit frustrated because it is going to look like a big old hullabaloo like this. That is because SVG files are meant to be edited and changed in case you need to edit the size. So if that's happening to you, make sure you select your entire file and click attach. Some people get confused between group, which is up here and attach down here. Group is only for designing. So if I group this, it's going to be great while I'm designing on this canvas, but it has no bearings on the cutting and attach is only gonna be the one that is going to attach it when you go to cut. So I've got it attached. I'm gonna hit make again. Voila, so much better. So now once it's on here, we are going to hit continue. And what I like to do on this Oracle 651, some of you guys have said that you may have a little bit of issue weeding. So here are a couple tips on that. One, you can select the iron on setting to cut very intricate things, or because this isn't super intricate, I'm gonna go with vinyl, but I'm going to give it a little bit more pressure. That's gonna make sure it gets through both the vinyl and the adhesive, so you have a clean break when you go to weed. Got my roll of vinyl that I like. This is Oracle 651, but you can use whatever vinyl that works for you. But good quality vinyl is gonna make all the difference in your projects. And also keep in mind, Cricut isn't the only one that sells vinyl. I actually prefer brands outside of Cricut if I had to pick my favorites. So that's just something to keep in mind, especially if you're new. So we're gonna line up the corner of our vinyl to the corner of our mat here. And I'm gonna start by pressing down with my hands. Now our file is going to be close to 11 inches, so I'm just going to trim it down here, straight across, and then I can add my little band back on my roll so it won't unroll in my drawers. Something else I've liked to do to make sure I get good cuts is to grab one of these brayers. They're not very expensive on Amazon, they also have off-brand ones, but you just go ahead and roll it on here, and it's going to smush it all down, get it hooked to your mat, and it will help with a better cut. Now we've got it on the mat. We're going to slide it in. What, whichever Cricut you have, there are just little guides to help you get your mat in. We're gonna push it flush with the wheels here and then hit the button to load it. Depending on the Cricut that you have, there's gonna be different buttons for loading, so I recommend you watch the onboarding videos from Cricut, but you'll hit your load button. It's gonna make sure you have the right size material, the right size mat that you told it that you were gonna have. And then when it's all ready to go, you are gonna get a blinking either cricket symbol or this play button, whatever machine you have. We're gonna hit it, let it cut, and we'll be back to unload it and start weeding. Once it's done, we're gonna hit eject and I'm gonna flip, I'm gonna flip my mat over and peel the mat away from the vinyl. You don't want to peel the vinyl away from the mat. It will help with ripping and it just will give you an overall better experience. So now that we have this, I usually like to just trim off if there's any extra vinyl so I can throw it in my scrap pile. And then it's time to weed and apply to our chalkboard. Then the process of weeding is removing any excess vinyl that you don't want as part of your decal. So I'm starting here by getting rid of any of the inner parts of the letters. You can do it whichever order you want. Sometimes I do those first, sometimes I do the big piece first and then do the innards. It's really up to you. And here is another trick if you've got a big piece to weed like this. I like to do a little bit and then trim it with my scissors. Just be careful that you're not cutting the actual letters of your days of the week. But if you just cut that excess off, it makes it a lot more manageable to work small piece by small piece. So word to the wise, you can trim as you go. So then that way you aren't more likely to rip up or mess up your decal you've worked so hard on. Then I'm gonna use the same transfer tape I have been using for the video. And I'm going to apply two pieces just because this is 11 inches wide and it's six inch wide transfer tape. I'm gonna make sure it is fully pushed down and then I'm gonna season my chalkboard before applying it. A, it's going to make it easier for me to write on it for the menu items and it's also gonna make it easier for the vinyl to stick because it gives it something to stick to. I'm gonna peel off that backer, get it centered onto my board. And then once it's where I want it, I'm gonna start in the center and push out from there. That helps remove any bubbles, so I like to go one swipe down the center and then go out from there. Make sure everything is pushed down and then carefully go one piece by one piece. So I'll do one piece of that transfer tape and then the second piece, 
peel it all off. And then your last step is to go through and add all of your menu items throughout the week. One of our resolutions for 2024 is to try to eat more at home and stay on top of meal planning. So I think this is going to be super helpful. I'm gonna have a piece of chalk in this in our kitchen. We can write down the things we have already planned. You can also put things like TBD. You don't have to fill out the whole thing, but I also wanna write like, you know, on Fridays if we're eating out, things like that. And this is a great thing that hopefully will help me keep one of our resolutions for a $1.25 and some vinyl. video gave you some inspiration so you can take it away and create some fun stuff with your Cricut or any other cutting machine that you have. Also, if you're interested in any of the cut files or fonts that I shared today, I've got all that info down in the description, or you could just scan this QR code to bop right over to my blog and download those free files. Also down in the description, I've got information on the Cricut Craft Fest and the Expressions Vinyl membership. So if any of that sounded good, you can find that all down in the description. If you can't find the description, just hit more under the video title on your app and then you can expand it and all those links are down there. If you can't find it, just leave me a comment and I will respond to you with the link as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you at the Cricut Craft Fest in a couple weeks and happy crafting. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!